If you've been using minoxidil for months and you feel like your results have slowed or plateaued in terms of hair regrowth, adding microneedling to your routine can sometimes double your results. While the results of microneedling are certainly worth it in many cases, it's definitely not for everybody. And doing it wrong, having improper technique, can be dangerous for your health in some cases. Today we'll discuss what the research shows about combining microneedling and minoxidil, who it works best for, why this treatment might be so synergistic, and even what the potential side effects or negative impacts to your health could be from doing this incorrectly. Hi, I'm Andrew. I'm the co-founder of Antigen and HairDAO. We are a global community of researchers, patients, and scientists dedicated to finding the cure to androgenetic alopecia, male female pattern hair loss, and ultimately being able to turn a slick bald scalp fully hairy again. We sell treatments via our telehealth, antigen.xyz, and we do real studies in our lab here behind me. With minoxidil alone, like most hair loss treatments, you're not gonna see much regrowth at all for the first couple months. You start to see modest improvements at around the three to six month mark, and then from six months to 12 months is when you'll notice the full extent of the regrowth possible on minoxidil. After that 12 month mark, minoxidil really serves to just maintain the existing hair you have. And many people start to get frustrated as they see growth slowing or they feel like the results have just plateaued. Because of that frustration of plateauing on their results, people will sometimes turn to microneedling. Before we can go into why they combine microneedling and minoxidil, we first need to understand the way that microneedling works to regrow your hair. Microneedling works by creating a bunch of little holes in your scalp with a needle. And when that happens, the body actually kicks into repair mode to send blood flow, nutrients, and various growth factors to the area to repair the damage you've just created. The healing response from the microneedling is ultimately what can wake up dormant hair follicles and stimulate additional regrowth with your existing hair follicles. It's the growth factors that it sends, the blood flow, and the nutrients that make the big difference. So it's your body's reaction to the microneedling which can actually stimulate the hair growth. At the same time, the microneedling can increase the production of collagen and elastin, which creates a much healthier scalp environment to ultimately stimulate hair growth. In addition, the microneedling creates little openings in the scalp, which can actually increase the penetration and absorption of topicals you might use, like minoxidil, which typically is absorbed pretty well, but it will increase the action as you make sure more of the drug is getting through the top layer of your skin to the base of the hair follicle where it needs to act. The increased absorption and penetration that you get from microneedling of existing topicals is why it's being increasingly explored as an add-on or adjunct therapy or obviously minoxidil, but a wide range of hair loss treatments, including finasteride, T3, dutasteride, etc. Several clinical trials now suggest that when you combine minoxidil with microneedling, you will increase the amount of responders to minoxidil, you'll increase the target area hair count gains that you would get from minoxidil, target area hair count widths, and even in some cases you speed up the pace of regrowth. One of the most commonly cited randomized controlled clinical trials, Durat et al. 2013, found particularly impressive and probably outlier results from combining minoxidil and microneedling in patients. At the 12 week mark, microneedling alone regrew about 22.2 hairs per square centimeter in this study. However, in contrast, the participants who used microneedling and minoxidil grew a ridiculous 91.4 hairs per square centimeter over the 12 week period. That is a wild four times improvement over the minoxidil alone group. And so you see there's clearly a very synergistic effect that exists between the minoxidil and the microneedling. Again, I want to highlight that this study showed unusually strong results from the combination of microneedling and minoxidil, and other studies have seen much more modest results, although there is clearly that same synergistic effect where you're gonna get much more regrowth by combining minoxidil and microneedling than you would from either standalone treatment. Additionally, while I said earlier in this video that it takes about six months to a year to see the full regrowth effects of minoxidil, there is a certain degree to which minoxidil plus microneedling will be sped up and you'll start to see effects earlier, think in the three to six month time frame. So you see why this combination is getting so much attention these days. Not only are you combining one of only two FDA approved drugs for treating hair loss, but you're adding it with this non-drug, so theoretically much safer, and people are seeing incredible results. However, the combination can cause significant and severe side effects if not done properly and in certain groups of people. I will cover those in the 
end of this video. So here's how to use minoxidil plus microneedling safely and effectively step by step. First up, the items that you'll need to successfully do microneedling. Number one, you'll need the microneedling pen. Our community has overwhelmingly voted the Dr. Pen microneedling device to be the favorite, most effective tool that they've used. New sterile cartridges, very important for cleanliness. You'll need a clean towel. You'll need alcohol to make sure that the site is clean before you do the microneedling. Cotton pads will also be helpful. And then hyaluronic acid to rub on the scalp as well can be very good to decrease the friction of the microneedling. And then finally, the optional requirements, gloves, or at least wash your hands, and 5% uh, lidocaine, which is a numbing topical if you need it. Personally, I'm able to do it without a numbing topical, but many people need one. For the first step, you're gonna wanna wash your hair twice. Make sure that the scalp environment is clean before you start microneedling. If you are using a numbing cream, make sure to use about half the tube, rub it across your scalp, and let it sit there for sort of 20 to 30 minutes, to allow for the full numbing effects to kick in. Then you're gonna wanna cleanse your scalp with at least a 60% alcohol uh, concentration to make sure that the site is now clean and to remove any of the residue from the numbing cream that you may have used. Then make sure you have a proper workspace that your device is charged and sterilized. We're almost ready to begin. Apply the hyaluronic acid to your scalp to make the sort of scalp environment smoother as you rub the microneedling device over it. Avoid serums like vitamin C or retinol during use. With clean hands or gloves, attach the cartridge or needle to the device without touching the actual needle. Adjust needle depth. Typically 0.5 to one millimeter is a good position for somebody first starting out. You could potentially go a little bit longer like a 1.5 millimeter needle. Once you actually start the microneedling, you're gonna wanna work in very small sections around the scalp, uh, maintaining a grid-like pattern to ensure that you're hitting every single sort of square centimeter of the scalp evenly and properly. And I would stop as you start to see redness and a little bit of blood perhaps in that area, move on to the next area. Finally, you will want to wait 24 to 48 hours after microneedling to actually apply the minoxidil. That's because when the wounds are fresh and open, uh, adding minoxidil can create much unwanted irritation, which you ideally want to avoid. In terms of the minoxidil application, you're gonna to want to apply about one milliliter of the 5% solution to your scalp, focusing on the balding areas. And then what we've found in our studies is that if you can massage it into your scalp, for one to three minutes, that will play a meaningful role in terms of increasing absorption. You wouldn't expect it, but it's true. Finally, you ideally want to leave that minoxidil there, avoid sweating, avoid showering for about four hours after application to make sure that it is able to properly absorb and get to the base of your follicles. Assuming you're applying the minoxidil once a day, the process of adding microneedling into your routine about every one to two weeks uh, can supercharge your routine, and I think you'll be really happy with the results you see. Okay, now, when it comes to safety, both minoxidil and microneedling can have certain side effects that you need to be aware of. These side effects include irritation, itching, redness, burning, and sometimes mild dermatitis on the scalp. It's pretty normal to experience a certain degree of scalp itching, which can sometimes be associated with ingredients in the minoxidil, like propylene glycol, or existing scalp conditions like seborrheic dermatitis. In all of our topicals, we make sure to not include propylene glycols. With microneedling, it is of course common to feel some sort of pain or burning uh, immediately after doing it. Essentially, you've created a bunch of micro wounds across your scalp, so you can expect a certain level of pain, but it should get better pretty quickly, within a couple hours. However, because microneedling creates all these micro wounds across the skin, you do need to be aware of infection that can occur, particularly if you haven't, you know, for example, sterilized the needle that you actually used with the microneedling pen. To be clear, you should never reuse a needle from your pen even if it's been sterilized. They are made for one use and then you throw them out. Outside of potential infection, each time a needle is used, it becomes duller and more likely to tear at the skin as it penetrates, creating additional potential for fibrosis or scarring, which can actually hurt your hair growth. So in summary, clean, fresh needle, that is the way you optimize your results with microneedling. Another important note is that if you are going to apply your minoxidil across the scalp immediately after microneedling, you're going to increase the systemic absorption of the minoxidil and thus increase the potential risk of side effects from the minoxidil as well. The increased penetration of the minoxidil increases the odds for certain side effects like dizziness, heart palpitations, fluid retention, or even blood pressure changes. Again, to avoid this, I recommend waiting at least 24 to 48 hours after microneedling to apply the minoxidil. Watch out for rare but serious side effects like excessive bleeding lasting longer than 15 minutes, persistent pain, severe swelling, dramatic inflammation, 
inflammation around the scalp, crusting as well. While we don't sell microneedling devices, you can purchase our supplemented 5% minoxidil, 5% azelaic acid topical on antigen.xyz. It is designed to boost regrowth while reducing any inflammation and bacteria on the scalp that may be occurring. Okay, in terms of timeline and what to expect. When patients use minoxidil as a standalone treatment, they typically experience a certain degree of shedding in the two to eight week period. This occurs as the old follicles are pushed out by the new follicles, which are being kicked into antigen, the antigen growth phase, uh, and essentially booting out the hair follicles above them. So the follicles are getting resynchronized into a new growth cycle. Comment your experiences with minoxidil and microneedling below. It would be a huge help to anybody who's considering doing this treatment in the future.